Okay, first up here on the show, Agribusiness Bank Rabobank has just launched applications for its 2021 Food Bites program. The program seeks startups ranging from seed stage to commercially viable, working in the food and agri-tech industries. To tell us more is Australian Head of Innovation, Natalie Gibson, who is right here in the studio with us. Nat, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. This is a great program. We've spoken to some of the fantastic yeah. startups involved. Um, but for anyone who's unfamiliar, just tell us a little bit about it and how it works. Sure, so Food Bites is Rabobank's global food and agriculture innovation platform where we connect startups, investors, corporates and farmers together to find the best sustainable food supply chain solutions um, to help feed us better. Now, we mentioned in the intro that it's from seed stage to commercially mm -hmm. viable. Uh, run us through the, the big categories though mm. that, that you're looking for startups from. Yeah, so we look seed to series B is kind of the, the sweet spot for us. And we look across ag tech, food tech, and then consumer food and beverage. They're kind of our three key areas and then within that, we have some key themes that we're looking for this year. We recently released our trend report um, at the start of the year. And so key things are, you know, looking at the um, sustainable supply chains, improved nutrition, um, improved resource management. Um, those kind of those are three kind of key themes. But mm. I think we're going to see some really new, interesting trends coming through as well, which is exciting. So it's a pretty big program because you're talking about 45 startups, mm. 15 in each category. I think they go through, what is it, about a 15-week program? Uh, no, or? it's a one-week intense one week. yeah, mentor week program. And then kick off on the pitching, I think, in about November. That's right. 15 will be taking to the public pitching virtually. And it's global. And yeah. you know, mm. when you look at companies like Proagni, one of the Australian yeah. ones, they've had enormous success as a consequence. They have. And, and interesting to see, you know, last year they actually hired a hotel room so they could be on that US time zone to really yeah. maximise not disrupting their family and their, and their business colleagues, but they announced their funding at the end of last year, another round. Swan, the other one who took out the ag tech category, which for an Australian startup to take out ag tech globally, yep. it's pretty amazing. So pretty proud of the Aussie startups, I have to say, and looking forward to what we discover this year. Uh, tell us how important that, that global exposure is for, for those uh, top 15 that make it to the next round. Well, I think even for the 45, to be honest with you, I think at the moment with COVID, it's really leveled the playing field for startups. Um, and I think to be really, it's been advantageous for the Australian startups and, the, and startups across APAC because no longer do they have to travel to the States or Europe to meet mm. with investors or the large corporates. Everyone's doing it virtually. So I think it really has given the startups from this side of the globe that opportunity to connect and really have that global network and just different opportunities that they wouldn't normally have just being based on this side of the world. Yeah. Now, Nat, um, you've seen, no doubt, some really fascinating things in agri-tech. Tell us a little bit about them. I'm sort of thinking when I hear what the satellite people are doing, the mm. IoT stuff around farms is absolutely amazing. But what are the sorts of things that are exciting you? Well, what's really interesting is because I was based in the US for four years and then coming back home the last two years is, you know, the trends that were in the States back then that are now coming through here. But what's really impressive here is what we're doing on the ag tech. I mean, it's our bread and butter. It's what we do so well here is agriculture. And I think getting those startups, those ideas on water, which is so important for our country, but for so many other parts of the world as well. So I think that ag tech technology um, really getting onto the global stage and getting recognised is something that I'm really hoping to see more of. What are the biggest challenges that um, Australian ag tech mm. uh, innovators are, are facing? Is it, is it funding or is it getting to that US market? I think it's a whole combination. I think, you know, if you speak to every sub, they obviously want funding. That's a key part. But at the same time, I think it's also validation. You know, having access to the network to validate their technologies, whether that's on farm or you know, in facilities to get access to larger businesses to help them grow. Are you expecting this year's cohort to change slightly in its makeup compared to last year or mm. what sort of changes are you expecting? Well, I'm, I'm expecting a strong contingent of ag tech startups from mm. Australia for sure, but I think we'll probably see an increase on the food tech side. Mm -hmm. You had Carapac on one of our startups last year in the packaging. I think with yeah. COVID, food safety, has become back on you know top of the list again, but also being still being sustainable. So it'll be interesting to see what we uncover there. And what about the fake meat sector? Everyone seems to be crazy <laughs> about that, and there's billions <laughs> pouring into it from investors. Yeah, there sure is. Um, I think yeah, everyone's doing it. I think it's like the current trend. I used to say, who's doing the PR for kale at the time when, when that was the latest <laughs> thing too. So um, I think we will see a lot of that. I think not even in just the meat sector. I think in seafood um, and alternative proteins, it's it's an important trend right now so I think we will see more of that 
but also on that improved nutrition side. I think, you know, what's going to help with aging populations and health and that mm. kind of thing, especially after COVID, I think that's yeah. become more top of mind. All right, well, Natalie, Head of Innovation at Rabobank, thank you so much for coming to join us on Startup Thanks Daily. Thanks for having me. Startups have got until May 16th. May 16th yep. to apply, foodbites.com forward slash apply. You'll see the criteria application form. Um, so, yeah, get your applications Have in. Have a crack. Right. You never yeah. know where to lead. Thanks for your time. <laughs> thank you for having me.